There are so many amazing benefits that can come from exercising. From changing how your body looks and feels, to increasing your strength, and even improving the function of your brain. One thing you likely often hear about exercise is that exercising can help you live longer. But what does this mean, and how does it happen? Most importantly, can any way of exercise help you live longer? Or should you be exercising in a very specific manner? First, let's discuss this idea of living longer. If we're going to live for a long time, what would have to happen? To keep things simple, let's break this down into three categories. First, we want to minimize the number of random or acute negative events that happen, such as getting struck by lightning. Number two, we'd want to maximize the positive functions of our body. We'd want our body working as optimally as it could on as many levels as it could. And number three, we'd want to minimize the chronic negative deterioration that's happening within our body. We'd want to be able to reverse damage that has happened. We'd want to be able to manage damage that is currently happening. And we'd want to be able to prevent new damage from starting. So if something's gonna help us live for a long time, we want it to be able to do at least one of these three things. Minimize the random or acute negative, maximize the positive, or, mi or minimize the chronic negative. While all three of these categories are somewhat out of our control, exercise can highly influence the latter two, making exercise a strong candidate for helping us to live longer. But what do we mean in terms of maximizing the positive and minimizing the chronic negative? What's happening within our cells with each of these? And how does exercise influence this? There are a number of hypotheses out there about what contributes to aging and longevity. I'm going to discuss four main ones today that have gained a lot of, pre that have gained a lot of press and attention over the years. The first is this idea of mitochondria. As you may remember from your high school biology class, mitochondria are one of the main energy producers of the cell and are often considered to be the powerhouse of the cell. Mitochondria utilize oxygen in the production of energy, called aerobic production of energy, which is not to be confused with exercises that are labeled as more aerobic in nature, such as running or cycling. If we're going to live for a long time, we need to make sure that our cells can produce sufficient amounts of energy to complete all of, the, all of their necessary tasks, because otherwise our cells become sick and are not able to function well. We also want to make sure that our body is able to clean up and clear out damaged cells. This process within our body, called autophagy, is vital to ensuring that we are able to ward off chronic disease and illness. When damaged cells start to accumulate, chronic disease develops. So if we're gonna live for a long time, we need to make sure that our body can clean up damaged cells. But then we also need to make sure that our body can replace those cells with healthy new ones. And that's where cellular division and replication comes into play. When cells divide and chromosomes replicate, something on the end of the chromosome called a telomere gets a little bit shorter. Now you may have heard of this idea of telomere shortening being a contributing factor to aging. Unfortunately, our telomeres can only get so short before they won't go any further, at which point it appears our cells will no longer divide and our chromosomes won't replicate, and we will lose the ability to replace the damaged cells with healthy new ones. So if we're going to live for a long time, we need to make sure that our telomeres stay as long as possible for as long as possible. Finally, if we're going to live for a long time, we need to make sure that our healthy cells stay protected from attack. Specifically, from reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen spe species, or ROS, are the, the number one initiator of all chronic health conditions out there, from heart disease, diabetes, cancer, to dementia. If we're gonna live for a long time, we need to make sure that our cells stay protected from this damage, from this chronic attack, from reactive oxygen species. So to recap, if we're gonna live for a long time, we need to make sure that our body can produce sufficient amounts of energy, it can clean up and clear out damaged cells. It can replace damaged cells with healthy new ones. And it can protect our healthy cells from chronic attack. The question now becomes, can exercise help with any of this? When it comes to mitochondria and exercise, this is something that exercise is very well known for. Resistance training, High intensity interval training and lower intensity cardiovascular activity have all been documented to increase the health and density of mitochondria in humans. What's really neat is the thing that stimulates the production of mitochondria is a byproduct of muscle contraction, which means the more muscles contract, 
the more intensely muscles contract, the more frequently muscles contract, and the longer muscles contract for, the more the byproducts get produced and the more mitochondria get produced. So can exercise help to stimulate mitochondrial production within our body, allowing our body to continue to produce sufficient amounts of energy? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> With autophagy, there appears to be four main ways in which autophagy happens within our body, all through the activation of various proteins. Now, these proteins have a number of roles within our body and do a whole bunch of things, including improving insulin sensitivity, decreasing inflammatory molecules, regulating the metabolism of the cell, and even helping our cells divide, in addition to starting the autophagy processes. So having these proteins activated is vital to ensuring our overall health and well-being. The thing that stimulates the activation of these proteins is the byproducts of muscle contraction, which means the more muscles contract, the more intensely muscles contract, the more frequently muscles contract, and the longer muscles contract for, the more these proteins get activated, the more we get all these amazing health benefits, and the more autophagy occurs. So can exercise help to stimulate autophagy within our body, allowing our body to continue to clean up and clear out damaged cells? Absolutely. With telomeres in exercise, what's interesting is actually moderate intensity exercise appears to be what's best for protecting and lengthening telomeres. Now, the, and this is done through the activation of an enzyme called telomerase. Now, the thing that stimulates telomerase activity is again the byproducts of muscle contraction. So you might think the more muscles contract, the more intensely muscles contract, the more frequently muscles contract, and the longer muscles contract for, the more telomerase activity would there be, and the more our telomeres would be better protected and lengthened. And while there's validity to this line of thought, the risk that's associated with really high intensity exercise is that muscle damage can occur. And when cells get damaged, they either have to be repaired or replaced. And if it's the latter, that means other cells have to divide, chromosomes have to replicate, and the telomeres get a little bit shorter. So, there appears to be a sweet spot with moderate intensity exercise, where we're able to get enough telomerase activity to still protect and lengthen the telomeres, while still minimizing the risk of creating muscle damage. So can exercise help to protect and lengthen our telomeres, allowing our cells to continue to divide and replace damaged cells? Absolutely. Finally, with protection from reactive oxygen species, we need to understand that reactive oxygen species are the number one initiator of all chronic health conditions, from heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and dementia. What's really cool is our body has its own internal antioxidant production system that will help to combat the attack from reactive oxygen species. The thing that initiates the stimulation of the antioxidants is the byproducts of muscle contraction, which means the more muscles contract, the more intensely muscles contract, the more frequently the muscles contract, and the longer muscles contract for, the more these antioxidants get produced, and the better protected our cells become from damage from reactive oxygen species. What's important to understand about protecting ourselves from this damage and starting to produce our own antioxidants is that exercise has to be done on a frequent basis in order to get this. In fact, animal studies have shown that one day of inactivity leads to decreased insulin sensitivity. While human studies have shown changes in cardiac function, LDL to HDL ratio, as well as decreased insulin sensitivity within three days of bed rest. So if we're gonna get this protection from the antioxidants, from the dam or protection of the antioxidants from the damage of the reactive oxygen species, we need to make sure that we're exercising on a frequent basis. So can exercise help protect ourselves from chronic attack from reactive oxygen species that would otherwise lead to health conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and dementia? Absolutely. The question now becomes, how should we be exercising in order to gain all of these longevity boosting benefits that can come from exercise? While there's no one size fits all plan, and you should always consult with your physician before beginning any exercise program. The literature we discussed today would suggest a daily exercise routine that's broken down into three categories. Having reviewed the literature myself, including 66 papers for this presentation alone, my professional recommendation is as follows. 
Exercise needs to be done every single day at one of three intensity levels. Low intensity, which is approximately 55% of your maximum heart rate or effort. Medium intensity, which is approximately 70% of your maximum heart rate or effort. And high intensity, which is approximately 85% or above of your maximum heart rate or effort. A maximum of three days per week of low intensity exercise should be performed with a minimum of two days per week of both medium intensity and high intensity exercise should be performed. You can always level up and do more of the higher intensity days in lieu of fewer of the lower intensity days, but you cannot skip out on the high intensity days and just do the lower intensity. A minimum of 20 minutes of exercise needs to be done every single day with a minimum of two days per week of resistance training and two days per week of cardiovascular based exercise performed. Oftentimes when we think about exercising and we think about the benefits of exercise, we weigh those benefits against well, how much do we actually want that, and especially versus what we're currently doing. And then we decide whether or not we want to go exercise. But what we need to understand is there is a tremendous cost to not exercising. In fact, a paper released in October of 2018 showed that consistent inactivity and consistent low levels of physical activity were more detrimental to human health and longevity than heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and even smoking. This means that by consistently choosing to skip your workouts, not only are you missing out on all the health benefits that can come from exercise, you are actually doing more detriment to your health long term than if you were to develop heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, or start the habit of smoking. But there's good news. The good news for each of us is that it's never too late to start. In fact, a paper released as recent as March of 2019 showed that adults who have been sedentary for the majority of their lives were still able to see longevity boosting benefits from exercise, even when they began this habit as late as their 60s. Furthermore, there appears to be no upper known limit to the amount of benefit you can get from exercise, with those who are in elite physical condition having over a 10 times reduction in the rate of all-cause mortality versus those who are in low levels of physical condition. And by going from low level of physical condition to below average level of physical condition, you cut your rate of all-cause mortality in half. This is huge. Remember, the goal of exercising for your health and longevity is not to get you to try to live to be 150, nor is it to get you to live in an old age but have to be physically dependent on others. The goal of exercising for your health and longevity is to ward off preventable illnesses that could easily turn fatal, as well as allow you to do all the things in life that bring you joy for as long as you want to do them. As one of our podcast guests has said, I know 80 year olds in nursing homes, and I know 80 year olds in golf courses. The research that's coming out shows that the difference between the two is only minorly contributed to by your genetics, with the overwhelming majority contribution being how your lifestyle choices affect the expression of your genetics. Exercising on a daily basis is a lifestyle choice that without question will not only add more days to your life, but add more life to your days. I want to invite you and encourage you to make the choice to participate in exercise every single day so you can continue to do all the things you will love to do for as long as you want to do them. Thank you.